Uh, I would like to welcome you all to the uh, Family Medicine Academic Presentations by Registrars. Uh, today we are in for a lecture on sudden onset of sudden onset headache and unmissable diagnosis. This lecture will be done by uh, Dr. Manoj Setunga, uh, one of the Family Medicine Registrars in the uh, first batch, uh, most junior batch, and uh, he is a product of Maristella College. And then uh, he uh, graduated from University of Kalania and uh, did internship in uh, DGH Noir earlier and worked in uh, TH Batiklo and uh, Respiratory Disease Hospital in Valley Sara. And uh, he got through the DFM in 2020, 21 batch and joined us uh, as a uh, registrar in uh, MDFM 2022 20, batch. So uh, I would like to invite Dr. Manoj to uh, deliver his presentation. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you Dr. Prabhat for your warm introduction. Good evening, Lalanta Madam and all my colleagues. Um, today I'm going to discuss you with you a, a case about sudden onset headache uh, and miserable diagnosis. Uh, first, I will discuss you the case scenario. This patient, a 50-year-old lady, was admitted to neurology wall as requested by consultant neurologist for evaluation of headache. <coughs> patient developed a sudden onset aching type frontal headache on the day before admission at about 9 p.m. while watching TV. It was a moderate pain at the beginning and it worsened with time over two, three hours. It was mainly on right side and it also involved the right eye. Pain score was about eight and it was associated with nausea and vomiting, but she didn't have uh, there was excessive tearing on, on her right eye with tiredness and she couldn't see properly from that eye. She took paracetamol but pain was there persistently throughout the night. She did not have photophobia, halos or flashes of light and no loss of appetite or loss of weight. There was no limb weakness, bladder or bowel incontinence. She had features of press biopia after 45 years, but she did not use spectacles. In the following day, she contacted a private hospital at Ragama and the receptionist advised to meet, a, meet her, a consultant neurologist for her headache. Consultant neurologist advised her to get admitted to the hospital for further evaluation of the headache. And she got admitted to Ragama Teaching Hospital at about 8 p.m. Um, what are the possibilities in this presentation? Can anyone tell? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear. Okay. Can somebody tell possibilities? Sudden onset, uh, severe headache of pain score of eight. Uh, the fact that uh, he patient can uh, remember the exact time when uh, he got the headache while he was watching TV and uh, he can tell the time. So it all uh, directs to a, a point of onset of headache. So uh, neurological causes come high up in the list, even though he is not having any uh, Neurological deficits. Yes. Anything else? Can it be a cluster headache? Yeah. Yes, it's possible. Yes. Any other? Manoj, he complains of blurring of vision, is it? Uh, yes. yes uh, then it would be 
uh, vascular uh, arteritis like giant cell arteritis. Okay, it's possible. <laughs> anger closure, glaucoma. Yeah, acute anger closure, glaucoma. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, all are possible. And for the DDs, uh, mainly migraine, class headaches, and anger closure, glaucoma, CVA, and sub subarachnoid hemorrhages, and you all are correct. And we we'll go for the past medical history. She had right acoustic right sided acoustic neuroma and underwent surgery uh, five years back. And she did not she did not have recurrent headaches after the surgery. And she did not have diabetes, hypertension, or ischemic heart disease. And also she did not undergo eye checkups in the past. Uh, there was she was not using recurrent analgesics and uh, no history of migraine was there. In the family history, her son was diagnosed with glaucoma and he died at the age of 34 from ischemic heart disease in the last year. In the social history, she was a housewife, mother of two children, and lived with her daughter with good family support. Husband was passed away five years back due to MI and she also, she did not have features of depression. Uh, about ideas, concerns, and expectations, she thought that her headache was due to previous acoustic neuroma and concerned that it could be a malignancy. She expected to find out the cause and, if needed, do the same surgery to a possible recurrent tumor resection. On examination, patient was in pain and wiping the right eye due to tearing. Right eye examination, uh, there was conjunctival injection, mainly limbic area. Mid dilated pupils was noted and cornea was cloudy. No corneal opacities was there and visual activity on right eye was six by 24 and left eye six by 12. There was no features of cataract. Uh, with the examination finding, what is the most possible diagnosis? Glaucoma. Acute anger closure glaucoma? Yes, it's anger closure glaucoma. Uh, other examinations, CNS and CVS, both were normal. And in summary, patients uh, presented with sudden onset of moderate to severe headache with pain in her right eye for one day. And there was past history of acoustic neuroma and surgery was done and family history of glaucoma as well. Examination, circumcorneal redness, mid dilated pupil and corneal hazardness was there. And diagnosis, as you said, uh, it was acute anger closure glaucoma. And there was a doubt in whether need to evaluate for recurrence of acoustic neuroma as well because a neurologist admitted her for that one. On management, we informed the ophthalmology and medical officer and he came and did the sleep trap examination and her right eye uh, intraocular pressure was 60 and left eye IOP was 16. And she was diagnosed as acute anger closure glaucoma and she was given mannitol and uh, eye drops like kimolol, pilocarpine and oral acetylcelamide was given and uh, MO at, at about 9 p.m. plan to review uh, in the morning for consultant opinion. opinion. In the follow-up, in the morning, she was pain-free. Actually, she told uh, that he, he, she had a good sleep because in day before uh, the admission night, she did not have. Uh, consultant opinions took over the patient for further evaluation and management and neurologist planned to review her in one month for the assessment of headache and to decide on CECT brain. Uh, usually, uh, I will go for the discussion. Uh, usually, the um, patient with uh, acute anger closure glaucoma comes with eye pain, but this patient came with more prominent headache. But um, this is a diagnosed case of uh, acute anger glaucoma, and I will go for the discussion for the evaluation of eye pain. Uh, eye pain can be uh, causes of uh, structures from the uh, eye and also from the other areas of the 
uh, and then Nekasville for the conjunctive, if you, if you consider conjunctiva, it can be bacterial viral conjunctivitis. Um, if you consider cornea, it can be bacterial or viral keratitis, corneal abrasions, dye, eye syndrome, like that. Uh, and if you consider sclera, scleritis will be there. And anterior chamber, as discussed in this case, acute angle glaucoma. Anterior white is also a cause. And other causes can be cluster headaches and optic neuritis and orbital cellulitis as well. Regarding glaucoma, the glaucomas are a group of diseases causing damage to optic nerve by the effect of rays intraocular pressure on the optic nerve head. In the picture I have just put, I know everyone knows that because uh, echosim was produced by ciliary epithelium and it, uh, it, it uh, secreted to the posterior chamber and it drained to the anterior chamber via the pupil and drained to the, mainly to the trabecular mesh work and slim scanner. It about it is about 95% of drainage, but there's a, another pathway, obviously scleral pathway, it's about 5%. Uh, there are types of glaucomas. We can divide it into pediatric glaucomas, open angle glaucoma, and close angle glaucoma. In pediatric glaucomas, they are primarily congenital glaucomas. It's uh, from birth. It's usually caused by for, from the, uh, birth to two years, and it's mainly due to trabecular dysgenesis. It's monogenic inheritance, and later, late on the childhood glaucoma also develop. It's from two years to puberty. It also caused by trabecular dysgenesis. Secondary childhood glaucoma can be associated with non-acquired ocular anomalies like n rider non-acquired systemic diseases like trisomy 21, Marfan's neurofibromatosis, congenital rubella, and acquired conditions like uveitis, trauma, uh, steroids, and tumors also might cause pediatric glaucoma. Uh, regarding open angle glaucoma, it can be divided into primary and secondary as well. Uh, about primary open angle glaucoma is a chronic progressive potential blinding, irreversible eye disease causing optic nerve rim and retinal nerve fiber layer loss with visual field defects. It is usually, uh, it's always uh, angle appears normal. In chronic open angle glaucoma, affects about one in 200 of population over the age of 40 years and affects the male and females equally. Risk factors for primary open angle glaucoma are older age, higher intraocular pressure, black race, family history of glaucoma, moderate to high myopia, and lower diastolic blood pressure. Uh, think about the clinical features, it's usually asymptomatic, but it might gradually cause blindness uh, because it's uh, asymptomatic, asymptomatic. Commonly, it's an incidental finding uh, like we do for diabetic screening. Uh, uh, we can find it. On examination, uh, there is vertical cup disc ratio usually about more than 0.6 as it showed in the picture. Uh, there, there may be rim notching and disc hemorrhages as well. These two are more pathognomonic for uh, open angle glaucoma. Uh, there will be high or normal intraocular pressure because normal tension uh, glaucoma is also common. Uh, if, is normal intraocular pressure is about 11 to 21. And if it is more than 21, it's called increased intraocular pressure. Gonioscopy examination, it's usually in open angle glaucoma, iridocorneal angle is normal. Regarding secondary 
causes of open angle glaucoma. They are the commonest cause is pseudo exfoliative glaucoma. It's due to uh, exfoliate uh, proteinous material uh, secreted from the uh, iris deposited in the trabecular meshberg, and it causes obstruction and increase it. It increases the intraocular pressure. Uh, pigmentary glaucoma also same, and it's due to pigmentary material deposited in the trabecular meshberg, and it like as I described in the uh, pseudo exfoliative glaucoma. There are uh, other causes include lens institute that cataract lenses and also cause glaucoma due to their material secreted and intraocular hemorrhages, uveitis, intraocular tumors and ocular traumas as well. Steroid eye drops also cause iatrogenic uh, open angle glaucoma and raise epithelial venous stenosis such as cavernous sinus thrombosis is uh, one of the rare causes of secondary open angle glaucoma. Um, acute angle closed glaucoma, uh, as in this case, it's a primary uh, primary angle glaucoma that affects one in thousand subjects over forty years of age. It's rare than um, angle open glaucoma, and the risk factors include old age. A family history, female sex, it's in this case as well, hypermetropia, South and East Asians, and also the uh, eye, eye, eye structure also involved in this acute angle, angle plus glaucoma, like thick peripheral iris, a more anterior iris insertion, and also medications like SSRI, TCA, beta agonist, and sulfamide also, and metabolites like tropicamide also can cause acute glaucoma attack. Uh, clinical features as described in this case, sudden onset of headache with eye pain, blurred vision, halos around the eyes, and also vaguer symptoms like nausea, vomiting, and abdominal cramps. If it is a uh, subacute onset uh, angle plus glaucoma, these features might be not there, but halos around the lights may be there. So if patient comes with an acute angle closed glaucoma, we have to always ask about uh, the previous episodes of halos around the lights. It might be, um, we can diagnose patient easily with those features. Examination, uh, intraocular IO uh, pressure will be high. It's often about more than 40 and corneal edema, pupil, mid dilated and reduced or no reactive to light, venous congestion and CD injection. And, uh, but most probably fundus will be very difficult to examine because of the tearing and also the patient uh, corneal haziness as well. And gonioscopy is a gold standard diagnosis test for closed angle. Um, regarding glaucoma investigations, there are two investigations we usually do uh, in the ophthalmology ward uh, clinics. The one is visual field test, and other is opti uh, optical coherent tomography. Usu usually, visual field is done for diagnosis as well as the follow up patient. Usually, they uh, do five times for the first two years to. Uh, to see how the progression and usually uh, acute scotoma is the uh, one of the diagnostic uh, uh, things that you can see in the visual test. Uh, uh, that is the picture I have shown. Uh, OCT test also um, carry out for the early stage of the disease follow up but uh, it, it measures the thickness of the retinal nerve fiber layer. But after uh, some time in the chronic stage, uh, this thickness of this retinal fiber layer will be uh, same and it's called the flow effect. And you cannot uh, uh, assess the thickness because it will be continuous the same thickness after some time. Um, 
about the management management mainly involves medical management and also surgical and also laser therapy medical management uh, those eye drops are the mainstay of management in the chronic open angle glaucoma uh, prostaglandins or prostonamides should be the first line in adults and also carbonic anhydride inhibitors like brinzolamide should be used as the first line in children. Monotherapy is the first choice during any teaching and treatment and consider fixed combinations in patients failing to achieve target IOP with monotherapy. Uh, because all, most of the patients go to the eye clinic and with the effects and the adverse effects with those eye drops usually come to GP and ask what's happened and they will ask our opinion as well. So uh, regarding drugs, there are uh, classes of drugs, usually alpha adrenergic agonists, beta blockers, prostaglandin analogs, and also with, um, carbonic anhydride inhibitors are there. Uh, the main act mechanism actions of alpha adrenergic agonists and beta blockers are decreased equosium production. And alpha adrenergic uh, drugs are usually brimonidine, as we call in a, its drug names are alpha gun. And those drugs cause ocular allergy, uh, somnolence, bitter taste, dry mouth, systemic hypotension and irregular heart rate. Beta blockers also uh, sometimes cause, um, mostly uh, cause bradycardia, bronchospasms, depression, fatigue, ocular dryness, and selective um, beta, beta uh, also might cause few respiratory side effects as well. So if the patient comes with exacerbation of bronchial asthma and recently diagnosed patient with uh, glaucoma, we have to consider whether he has started beta blockers as well. So if it is there, we have to advise to go and meet the ophthalmologist for the uh, alternative eye drops. So carbonic anhydride inhibitors also decrease aqueous hemoproduction production and it also, it can cause ocular irritation and sour taste. Prostaglandin analogs are usually uh, in the day-to-day -day life, we are mostly pa patients are using that one as a because it's a first line drug and it increased outflow through previous scleral pathway. And it's a one-time one daily dose, typically at wait time, so it's easy by, and good for the compliance in the old age as well. And it length, but the side effects of it are usually, hyperemia is there and uh, Lengthening of eyelashes, changing in iris color, or periocular skin hyperpigmentation, and intraocular inflammation and keratitis also can have. We get a little bit of laser management. Laser trabecular plastic usually do for open angle glaucoma, and laser laser iris are done for angle closure glaucoma, but it's uh, very rarely done in Sri Lanka, especially in uh, Ragama Hospital, it is not doing. Uh, surgical management wise, trabeculectomy is the gold standard surgical management. It it is um, in the as in in the picture, it makes a channel from the anterior chamber to the through the sclera and that pathway. Through that pathway, the aqueous humor drain out, and um, as in, in the picture, the blip you can see after the surgery. Uh, regarding cataract surgery, because mo most of the people undergo cataract surgery and they always think that it is beneficial, but uh, we can't tell it is not beneficial because uh, in uh, severe cataract, uh, these material can cause uh, sec uh, secondary uh, angle closure and open angle glaucoma as well because the material 
comes from the cat track so cat but uh, in the guidelines cataract surgery along is of limited benefit in the lowering uh, the iop and in uh, open angle glaucoma and it is not recommended as an intervention to control glaucoma because most of the people ask these things so we have to tell that it is um, it, it is uh, we, 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 he, they can go and get the uh, vision correct but it's not um, reduce the intraocular pressure but it might be beneficial if the cataract is severe uh, these are my references and thank you and if there is are there any questions Yeah, Manoj, you told, you told us that, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah the acute angle closure glaucoma, you are starting like monotherapy first. But uh, yeah. these days I'm doing the ophthalmology appointment with Dr. Gaius and what he told me is we have to control the blood pressure with maximum modalities of routes of drugs like uh, beta blockers, and uh, uh, the other manitol, the other group, groups of drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, uh, uh, if it is an acute uh, angle closure glaucoma, we yeah. have to re uh, first we have to reduce the uh, IOP for a normal level. But if if we diagnose patients with uh, the, those uh, open angle, uh, so we can initially start. And whether see whether the um, uh, level intraocular pressure levels uh, get reduced, and we can wait for some time, and we can add or if it is there's no change in, in uh, intraocular pressure, we can change uh, new drugs. Uh, but we, then, if it is responding, we can add an, another drug because my mother also having um, she's having normal pressure glaucoma, but. Yeah. Uh, 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 Usually IOP is usually uh, in normal range, about 16, but started on uh, uh, prostaglandin analog. But again, the because the visual field effects are continuously there, uh, progressive. So she was uh, at another drug, uh, like uh, the beta blocker, timolol. Mm -hmm. So we, we are depending on the uh, patient's uh, visual uh, progression, especially with the visual field test, done uh, we can decide whether to add or continue the same drugs but they usually telling to start with uh, prostaglandin analog yeah as a <clears throat> family medicine doctors we have to advise the patients to put the eye drops regularly sometimes they stop putting those drugs they're lifelong drugs these yes. are lifelong drugs so they have to uh, we have to advise them to uh, be compliant with the drugs. And the thing, sometimes they, uh, we have to tell them that uh, if they can go like uh, their uh, acute, the closure glaucoma will worse, but they go to the dark rooms and we have to advise them like not to read books in dark places, not to wear sunglasses, like things as family physicians. So, yes. Those are also important, I think, yeah. Yes, that is important, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Manoj, Jason here. Yes. Uh, what is the guideline on screening for glaucoma, especially if you have a first degree family relative uh, diagnosed with it? Like for example, I had a patient recently, a uh, 74 year old lady, had been treated by eye surgeon for glaucoma for a few years. And the last mm -hmm. visit was told it's end stage. And during that visit only he had asked the mother to screen the family members. Uh, so do we have a role there? Uh, or what is the guideline on screening? Yes, guideline uh, usually tell after 40 years, if there's a family member in the family, uh, family member is there, usually the screening starts at 
uh, 40 years of age. So uh, we can do uh, screening and uh, especially screening is usually be the exa uh, history examination. And also after that, we can do visual field uh, test to identify whether there is a visual field defect is there. And after that, uh, they are telling uh, annually or two, uh, two yearly, we can assess. So a family doctor can do the screening. Yes, doesn't need to go to the eye surgeon for that. Yes, we, uh, if, if OCT family, needed, no, those things. Yes, we, uh, we usually OP. do OCT, uh, visual, harmful visual field, we can, I think we can order, but Usually, uh, we have to refer if there we can order, but if there's a defect, we can refer to the um, uh, ophthalmologist to we can get our opinion from him. And uh, those things we can do, but OCT usually uh, they, the op ophthalmologist orders. Uh, I don't know about it. Uh, what uh, I Lalanta, madam, is there? No, madam, what is your idea about it? Yes, now a lot of things like okay, fine. Now uh, there are a lot of things to discuss here. There are a lot of uh, like take home messages as well. And if a patient comes with headache and eye pain, so you have discussed some differentials, and you know what only thing what we can say here because it's, we are regarding you know, a glaucoma. So, I mean, examination of eye is important. So those, though, we, though we are, there are a lot of differentials, so examination, eye examination is a must if a patient comes with you know, headache as well as eye pain, whether there's eye pain or not, it's a good, uh, like it's eye opener for opening for us as well, because this particular patient admitted to neurology ward with the severe sort of eye symptoms only, they actually wanted to go for the eye, the ophthalmologist or the MO ophthalmologist opinion, but it's for us. So they are in a specific, like special, like specialized wards, like neurology or the ophthalmology units, but we as like people in the primary care, so they just come with headaches, may or may not be having eye pain. You know, it's better to have a look at least what's going on there in the eye. And that's the point where we can use these screening methods, right? And that is the point where we can ask about the family history of glaucoma. And as you mentioned about the family history of glaucoma, and you know the guideline says after 40, we can you know educate the people, okay, the family members, the, or the suppose that mother got uh, uh, maybe the glaucoma, and we can advise these guys, okay, fine, after 40, the other members should come for the test. But if they have any sort of eye complaints, the age does not, I don't think the age is a, a like cut. I mean, the point we can stop like before 40, you cannot come for eye screening or the test. But if they have some sort of a, any complaints or regarding uh, like their vision or any pain, yes, we have to, I mean, to, I mean, have a look and then we can refer. And all the patients, they're referring all the patients with a, some sort of a query in, Glaucoma, it's good for a just a medical officer, but if you have this, that's why we want to send you all for the to learn some things about uh, of thermological management and primary care. You have to use this knowledge. How do you know, that is a, I mean, I expect you all to read what is the what are the screening methods we can do, like use for to check the glaucoma. And you know, if that you say, but there are like the, the patients with floaters, the patients with you know, you are the halos. So, what are the differentials? So, suppose I if I put it in this way, if a patient comes with floaters, 
maybe we'll, uh, we'll just say 55 year old a female or the male presents with floaters. So what are your differentials? Because is, is this is related, that's what I'm just asking. So that is how we had to screen for those things. What are the possibilities? What do you think? What are the causes for floaters? Retinal detachment. Yes, retinal detachment is the most, I mean, the serious thing we have to detect. You know, like it had happened for people with the, that they just ignore floaters because at the age of 55, it's made, floaters could be age related, right? So, and it could be just, maybe just bleeding, maybe eye surgeries can cause floaters. But if a patient comes with a, a history of floaters and we examine it's a cataract, it is our duty to sort of like uh, like encourage them to tell this particular story the buff floaters to the eye surgeon because if he open the eye without doing anything to the retina she will totally blind after the surgery of i mean the cataract surgery it had happened to one of our sisters there in uh, in homagam hospital as well so it is as primary care physicians yes that's very good that you told floaters could be I mean, it's with as very dangerous like retinal detachment or it could be age related. The same as halos. The question you highlighted the point was, do we have to screen or do we have to refer? But there are primarily, we can do some sort of a screening as you told, you know, the, you know, the, the like uh, we can check the vision, right? Peripheral, you know, the vision is very important and any, any defects in those things. But people with advanced, you know, the glaucoma only, they have all the symptoms and signs suggestive of glaucoma. Because of that, if with a, like, you know, it, it's a very sort of minor positive sign is an indicate, in, in, indicative of referring the patient to the eye surgeon with the family positive family history because we because we are dealing with an eye because the losing an eye is a big thing for like everybody so we have to so do some screening regularly and then if with a very little positive thing it's an indicator for sending them for the I mean, like, so we, we, we can order, but it's not the, it's not a good thing. We have to understand our limits. So if we say we have done these screenings and it is just, this is positive. And could you please sort of do this? Uh, I mean, do the needful for the patient. Definitely. They, I mean, they wish to do all this stuff because they know that you are there to support for the patient. If it is, though it is negative, they know the patient is in safe hands because you usually do the screening regularly. So that is the message we had to do, give to the patients, though we send, though it's negative, we are there to support you because we are there to, uh, I mean, like, uh, uh, like take, I mean, like sort of a, some sort of a, um, assessment regularly to avoid further damage to your, the eye. So that I think that is the most important message we have to give to the patients. So that is the expectation from the patients, I like uh, from us because you know it's they know we are there in the doctors in the primary care as well as the, we are there. The, I mean, the, like what you call as the family doctor to them. So I think that's uh, uh, enough for that. But I, uh, but for the uh, uh, sort of examination of eye. But I think uh, it's better. If you know, I mean, if you could discuss about the there, because it's a long term disease and long term use of eye drops, long term complications. So the patients will come with this complications as well as so sort the of complications of uh, the eye drops, because the compliance is very poor. And what are their common problems? Well, how we can answer those things? I think if you could discuss that part, I think it's better. It's not just like one or two sort of adverse effects. If you, because they have 101 questions, the patients, they ask, you know, doctor, this, if I use this particular medicine, I have this issue. So each and every patient, we don't have to refer. If you know, if you know some sort of like understanding what are the adverse effects of these things and how can we overcome or 
So give some sort of, though it's have they have adverse effects, if we say, okay, fine, if it is a lifelong thing, you have to continue, definitely the compliance rate is, is going up. So I, I think it's for this forum is good for you all to discuss those things. Yeah, it's we know we have to understand what they do in the secondary care levels. But anyway, because day to day we come across patients with those complications as well as the like poor compliance and they have uh, like questions regarding their eye drops. So it's a very sort of uh, the one thing is the you know if they don't have uh, eye drops from the because if they don't issue from the the hospitals at the moment they told the price is very much high now all this because we I come across a lot of patients with the they used to I mean it's a lifelong thing they use this eye drops and the cost is very high these days they this they forget they usually forget things they don't want to continue because they want to they know they know it's good but they cannot afford. So if you say, but it's like the way we used to get some, you know, oral hypoglycemics for the diabetes, like SLD patients, they have to continue medicines, maybe steroids. The same way, if we can educate them, definitely they, they will continue. This type of conversations are very important with the patient, but if for that, you need to have a good knowledge about, you know, the same way the other, the like uh, diseases, they do in the secondary care, but we are there as a shared care. This is again a shared care we use. I mean, it's the term you have to use, the shared care. And I think I, I, I hope that you have to discuss this shared care business in this uh, glaucoma uh, patients as well, because all the time we cannot send these patients to secondary care, right? What, uh, I mean, I think it's better you can discuss like things related to that. Okay, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, madam. Uh, one thing, madam, and uh, in the periphery, when we work in the periphery, actually we have only sometimes very, very few facilities. Like uh, on, it, sometimes we have only torch. So to examine the patient, no, there, there's no ophthalmoscope available. So at that time, Madam, one day, one patient came to me and uh, with headache only, and uh, he had some vomiting also. And at that time, the torch was with me and I just uh, examined the eyes with the torch. And then I saw some opacity in the cornea and with the digital pressure over the eyelid, uh, I found that there's abnormality, like it is very, very hard. So at that time, he didn't uh, tell me about uh, any visual defects or anything. So I straight away asked him to check his uh, eyes. At that time, he was diagnosed with glaucoma. So uh, that was also, I think good if he touched the eyelid and press a little gently if there's no pain and they mean you can have a just rough idea about about it madam uh, what was the presentation and what do you mean by periphery a periphery means a uh, madam uh, uh, in a like a peripheral hospital we where we are where we cannot find any ophthalmoscope so you know let's switch uh, my question so what, I mean, do you think that we don't have ophthalmoscope in hospitals? Yes, yeah, sometimes actually there was no batteries and uh, there are some. No, that's as, that's yeah. what I'm telling now. It is for a most of course okay, but if you are working, you know, it's your duty to get all the like. It's a very minor things like ophthalmoscope or whatever the finding batteries or whatever things it's a, as a consultant one day you should i mean this the peri, though what is your call as peripheries i don't think it's uh for our like the colleagues we cannot say you you have only the torch you cannot do but it's not the way we have to find out somehow to upgrade the place that's one thing and second thing is what's the presentation of the patient only headache madam only headache. headache and the person doesn't have any eye pain. No eye pain. And no, that's a good, that's what I told, you know, if, if though the patient has come with headache, it's good that you have to at least check the eyes 
at least you press the eye but at that point if there's some sort of like tenderness over the like eyeball so that means it'll be tough in an advanced place like it's not the just uh, you know it's, it's not the starting point of glaucoma yeah because it's iop is, is a little bit higher in this definitely it's a bit higher in this patient otherwise there's there won't be this much of like it's not stony hard but still there's some sort of a uh, yeah. tenderness there but it's good that you highlighted the point like but uh, i think before that you try to do that before it's you have to if when a patient comes with headache you have to examine the eyes that's one there's no doubt about that but i i'm telling you not as medical officers you as registrars as senior registrars as well as the consultants one day you know at least you have to have some you know a little bit more knowledge about screen people in little bit of not in advanced cases you know the starting of the disease that is how that is the idea of referring patients that is the idea of not to get complications that's the point i would like to highlight to you all so if it is your duty to find if if there's no sort of like uh, uh, facilities i don't think it's not good a good place to work for a consultant but anyway it's you don't have you to try to try to get all the uh, sort of facilities for your case as a medical officer you did a nice job that is how you had to work but one day because why we do all this sort of things one day you will be become consultants and how do you work as consultants in you know as in the primary care so we have to focus to that level yeah. okay good uh, chamila but it's good your inspiration is very good like it's good that yeah thank you ma'am i think there are good, like uh, resina registrars or the say registrars i think uh, here i can see sudarshan is there i suppose yeah sudarshini was working in a i i think of uh, units i mean for some years so sudarshini could you give some sort of a, like uh, uh, ideas about this uh, yes madam uh, like, like as she said uh, the examining under the like uh, the eye ball over the eye ball to have the idea of eye pressure is a very good method of examination and uh, the other one thing i want to clarify that somebody mentioned about the uh, asking uh, patients to avoid wearing sun the sunglasses for glaucoma patients uh, i doubt because we usually advise them to wear sunglasses to protect their eyes so i just want to i think ask. chamila had done chamila do you yeah, can yeah. you <laughs> yeah madam because when we are using the eye uh, sunglasses our uh, uh, the pupil get uh, madam uh, yeah dilated so uh, the glow like, chamila you it's your own it's idea you have come across some sort of yeah, no, no 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 madam i have seen some uh, these these are the instructions that Uh, given UK, uh, UK, madam, because uh, they repeatedly tell that uh, read, do not uh, go to the dark rooms and read TV, read the newspapers. And that read, of course, uh, that is of course that, correct. That is of course correct, Chamila. Yeah, so they train by. So with they this they, if they definitely go to a dark place, definitely the people get dilated to get uh, adequate light to the eye. yeah but it's of course that i think uh, it's good but anyway as sudarshini mentioned that's what i just wanted to ask about you sudarshini usually yeah. we ask to person to use some sunglasses it I yeah think. even a yeah, glaucoma yeah. patient we specifically mm -hmm. ask madam because like they have to mm -hmm. protect their eye from uv damage and everything so i think we need to like clarify it because as far as i know we need to advise patient to wear sunglasses when they go out yeah that is of course you know it's a the change in the like country wise country because you know in sri lanka we have uh, like good uh, like sunlight so we had to protect yeah. and there of course they don't have much so if you go to like a little bit of a darker place from the dark side 
then they try to open you know try to open the eyes like in the sense like uh, dilate the pupils then there's a damage is more than the the if we don't use the uh, the sunglasses or work reading in a dark place i think it's a bit of a different things but when you yeah. actually it's a good point i think uh, i who manosh you, it's your duty to find that uh, the, the, this thing whether to okay. use sunglasses or not okay when i so check we have, to, we have to we have to tell the patients yeah and the madam the two surgeries that he mentioned that it's rarely done but in like kudiyapitiya we usually do those two surgeries as routine procedures but of course i did my appointment like my md appointment at ragama they are i also like didn't see much of surgeries perform but it's hmm. usually done madam hmm. sri lanka hmm 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 it depends on the who are the like surgeons yes. who are like have good yeah. hands you yes. usually the eye people so they you some are like do some sort of all the medications if they have yeah. to have a good pair of hands definitely they, they go for surgery so i know yeah. different eye surgeons what's their approach is yeah and that's how i choose people for this pp if i send this person this particular patient to that particular person definitely it will happen like we have to know their personal things as well the capabilities Yes. The same way. Could you please like tell me about the you know the adverse effects and how do you like sort of give uh, instruct the people because of their poor compliance is a very huge thing and because of the price uh, factor as well. Yeah, madam. Actually, when I was like they are at the eye unit, uh, our like usual mode of treatment is beta blockers and oral diamox. at mm. that time but mm. after that things have changed the mm. low, the price is a huge problem a huge problem still, yes yeah still the most of the government uh, clinic they go for oral diamox mm. because mm. which is uh, freely available mm. others all the eye drops are like uh, those days also about 1000 1500 yeah now it's more now, than 3000 yeah you see yeah, yeah now it's more than 3000 so i have no idea like how they are going to manage it like uh, i think uh, they have to do more surgeries plus go mm. for oral treatments so that's because i i came across a came, came across lot of patients to last 3 4 weeks so because yeah. they are like we are worried about the eye drop they don't have money to go for those things yeah it's a problem so then i don't know how to help these guys even the answer from the ophthalmology units also not so good and yeah. that's so sort of, that's the thing yeah even the like uh, the sample like those days they used to give freely like uh, the many mm. samples but that is not happening now madam mm -hmm. that's just yes. not happening now yeah so anyway the you know the orders of course uh, so what are there any what are the common adverse effects of the orals ah uh, orals mm. so they because you know so if we know the if we if there is no like sort of huge adverse effects we can ask them to like at least go for orals like go to the eye surgeons and then like some like to do those things as well Actually, madam, I have not experienced like much uh, oral adverse effects per se, and I'm not like very uh, uh, sure about oh, like that. Mox, because uh, yeah, it's it's another point that we can yeah. you know it's a it's a very so it's a huge problem these days. That's the time I just wanted to ask Manoj to go through the with the adverse effects and all sort of things. because yes. they come in us and from us they don't go to like even in hospitals to getting an appointment there in the ophthalmology unit is a problem for them they have to wait in the queues and lot of like things but anyway this easy access for is us they can straight away they, when they come for some other reason they just check you know doctor look here this has happened for me i have, what shall i do and all these things 
So we should have some answers for those things as well. That's why I was just. I usually like, uh, madam, uh, like during like the when we when we did the clinic, uh, usually they don't complain any side effects as mm -hmm. such because mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. like uh, the way of our people. They usually they don't complain mm -hmm. of side effects, and we they are they don't the... complain adverse effects to ophthalmology. Unit. They do yes. this for the our clinics. That's a problem. Yeah. Mm -mm. So anyhow, so this is a good point for you all to again read what are the, because this, this is a huge problem. And then what are the, it's a congenital one. So as, what is the, you know, is it common? Uh, congenital ones, madam, I have seen like two babies when um, they are at the eye unit. But after that, no. Uh, what what are the things that a patient should like? Is a, you have to catch those guys. How do you do that? Any way of like catching? Ah, uh, they usually present with that. The babies usually present with madam tearing. So tearing could be that's the reason. The tearing could be due to some other reasons. What is most common? Uh, tearing and you know the some secretions and you know. What is the, the most common? Tearing huh? is the commonest one, madam. Huh? Tearing, they are telling tearing is the commonest uh, presentation of Yeah, what, is, what if it is tearing? What is the most common diagnosis? That's what I'm asking. Babies is come. usually like uh, the lactimer duct obstruction. Yeah, the lactimer like duct obstruction is the most common thing. Yeah. So we, we, you know, with what we do, the massaging of this particular area, and then we send this, these people, babies out. So other than that, are there any ways of catching these guys, uh -huh. these babies? That's what I'm asking. Uh -huh. Because that's the normal way because we come across a lot of patients with uh, babies with rearing and the, like very new nets. They come with the brought by mothers and we educate them. But anyway, what's then? If you miss it, it's a problem then. Uh, their eyes are usually large, madam, like uh, large. It looks like... Uh, hmm. Yeah, very large eyes they have. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, Meta, it's it's good that to like to understand as primary care physicians, if the mother like brings a baby with you know some tearing, what are the possibilities? It's a good uh, MCQ. Okay, and for you all to look at, I mean, you better. I mean, how do you catch glaucoma, congenital glaucoma in these patients? It's a good question. Because we hardly, because the people usually complain before they go to the ophthalmology unit to the primary care physician. So because of that, we should know all these things, I suppose. Mm, what else? Can they present with crying, madam? Crying? Yeah. Why? Because of headache. <laughs> oh, do they get headaches? That's the other question. Uh, no, there are some like specific symptoms, of course. I can't uh, recall those. Yeah, it's a good thing for you all as well. Better go through those things. Most of the people are silent today. Why is that? So now it's open for you all to discuss the same stuff. I just search in the net, madam. They say uh, epiphora, photophobia, and blepharospasm. But it's for neonates. Uh, it says uh, classical child of an infant or young child, uh, epiphora, photophobia, and blepharospasm, madam. And large corneal diameter or increase in corneal diameter within the first few years of life provides strong additional support for the diagnosis of congenital glaucoma. <laughs> What are the trials? So they still, you know, they still. epiphora, photo, mm. photophobia, and blepharospasm, madam. So blepharospasm, that means now, now how, how, what's the presentation now? They just like, you know, they, I mean, what is the blepharospasm? So what, what they do then? Blepharospasm means. 
that's we have to understand this they have to tell yeah. something some complaint yeah. should be yeah it's kind of like blink it's kind of blinking like, is it blinking yeah. blinking like uh, like twitching eye twitching kind of eye twitching mm mm-hmm. yeah we have to find out what do you, what do you mean by blepharospasm in children anyway so those are the things like okay we have to think of in congenital what is the age group what is the common age group we can find and what are the complaints and if, the, if there's a congenital glaucoma do you have to screen the other children and those are the things right yeah. these are the points you have to i mean it's for this type of a conversation it is the things you have to it's as a presenter you better go for those things as well okay madam i will go through that and let you know hmm. we have to in the next uh, presentation we, it's your duty to tell you how these are the clarifications we needed to do that day and you okay. try to be satisfied okay man i will do that okay thank you madam okay thank you madam so i mean oh, i mean if you don't have any questions or if it if it is uh, is it not clear that's why you are not clo- i mean not talking is it most of the people now t- they are not talking today what is the next uh, week present i mean who is the person i, I don't know as the presentation who is the person who is doing the next uh, week who will be the next presenter nobody is answering the question i can hear you madam So that's what I'm asking. Who will be the next presenter? Then? Madam, I am. I am Doctor. I am fine as Madam. Ah, fine as you are the first. Okay, fine. It's your turn. Yes. All yes. right. Okay then. Okay, right. So if you don't have any questions, and uh, shall we wind up? Who is? I think Prabhat is doing the job. Okay, fine. I will. stop then you can talk thank you madam thank you madam thank you madam good night good night thank you madam